Hey, everybody. Welcome to Don't Make Me Come Back There. We are a funny podcast about family. My name is Dustin Nickerson. I'm a stand-up comedian and the host of the aforementioned podcast. And alongside me in our state-of-the-art recording studio above Public Square Coffee in downtown La Mesa, California, is my lovely wife and co-host, CFO, overall great gal, Melissa Nickerson. Hey there. And our producer, Andy Lara, is here as well. What's up? He was so late. <laughs> he was so late. He was sleeping on the job. And I held it in until we we're on air because I didn't want to make him feel bad until it was public. You cheers. cheers. I don't have cheers? anything to cheers because okay. I drank my coffee already, Andy. <laughs> it actually was fine. Mine's we, a little cold. We had uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple episodes to prep for, and uh, Mel and I get we get some chia pudding. Chia, we sure chia, did. Yeah. Mm. It's so good. Mm-hmm. So good. I would have rather you been on time, but. Uh, <laughs> when life gives you lemons, eat chia seed. Eat chia seed pudding, pudding. because lemonade way too much sugar. Way too much sugar. Anyway, speaking of lemonade, we are in the south. I was thinking the same segue. Yes. Nice, <laughs> nicely done. <laughs> so we got a lot to get to. Uh, as always on our podcast, we have a plan. Will we get to any of it? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. God only knows. God only knows what I'd be without you. That's what I always. Uh-huh. That's a thing that yeah. I thought of once, That's and uh, nice. it's, a, it's just like a thought. It's like a quote that I had once, you know? Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It just kind of hit me with like some instrumental behind it, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Kind of like in a whispery sing voice is just how I heard it in my mind, you know? <laughs> and it was kind of a departure because normally I was doing, normally it was more like beachy kind of sound quotes in my mind. Yeah. And then I just, I had this other one, this pet sounds thing. That, anyways, I'm talking about the beach boys. Guys, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, uh, we're we going to talk a little bit about uh, 10 days in Nate land. I was out touring with the, the old Nate, Nate B, so I call him, nice. you know, Nate B. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've heard of Hattie B's, and he's Nady B's, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and then we uh, went to uh, Hope Hills Camp, which we go to every summer. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Mel flying across the country solo with the kids. Yep, had a hard time mm-hmm. finding the Sky Train, but she made it. She got there. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to so talk about mad about the Sky Train. Yeah, <laughs> Mel's overall. <laughs> Reflections on her time back in the South this summer, mm-hmm. and and probably none of that slash some other things. Because if this is your first time listening to our episode, we we have we have an idea, we mm-hmm. have a goal of where we're mm-hmm. gonna get, and then we just kind of see what happens. Mm-hmm. I am on tour. Let's see here. I'm trying to think about when this is going to come out. I think I was in Nashville last weekend. Okay, Nashville or Chicago. Mm-hmm. Either way, thanks for coming. <laughs> Um, it was a blast. It was. Uh, they are going to be blast because I'm pretty sure those are all going to be sold out shows, and they're all zanies, and they're fantastic. I don't know exactly when this is going to come out. There's a lot of moving parts in our organization here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but here's what I got coming up as far as other upcoming tour dates. Uh, July 26th through 27th, we'll be at Summit Comedy Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Then we're in August. We go Atlanta, Charleston, Asheville, Charlotte, Omaha, San Francisco, Sacramento, San Antonio, Houston, Addison, into the rest of the fall, Tacoma, Milwaukee, Boston, Appleton, Wisconsin, Austin, Louisville, Salt Lake, Oxnard, Bakes- Bakersfield, California, Springfield, uh, that one is sold out. We're trying to add another show. That went on sale and sold out so fast. Thank you, Springfield. Uh, uh, Raleigh, Oklahoma, the rest of the year. Tulsa, Spokane. Now on sale for next year, January 23rd through 25th, Indianapolis, Indiana. And February 13th through 15th, Helium Comedy Club, St. Louis, Missouri. So there you go. If you're like, no, you got to come to my city. Well, tell me. I, I come eventually. I come to all of these cities eventually. It takes. It just mm-hmm. takes time. Mm-hmm. Um, also, we got our next Patreon Zoom on Sunday, July 28th. If you're not familiar with Patreon, Patreon is just a little way that you can give a little more to the pod and get a little more from the pod. Things mm-hmm. that you get there. You get early content releases. Like you get to see the video of this pod before everybody else does and any other my YouTube content. I have a video that's going up tomorrow, I think, that the patrons have had since like two days ago. Mm-hmm. So uh, merch discounts. Also, uh, certainly the tears, tears explain it, but uh-huh. uh, meet and greets at each show. If you come to the show, yeah. We uh, we hang out before a little bit, uh, 10, 15 minutes in the green room. We do a monthly Zoom hang. Monthly Zoom hang. Um, You get some merch at the different tiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. And you get Mm -hmm. Mel's Hot Political Rants. She has a blog that you, it's, it is. It's, it's. It's the dark web. It's fiery. It is. Mm -hmm. Called The Classic Woman. The Classic Woman. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and you get this some one was called behind uh, the scenes, uh, most recent post when women were still women. It's a hot. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good title. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. It's not bad. Uh, marketing is easy. Uh, <laughs> All right, everybody. So we are back in uh, in our, our hometown of uh, La Mesa, California. Yeah. That's where we live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, have, we we I was gone got for, back Saturday. We got back Saturday. I yep. was gone for mm-hmm. two and a half weeks, which is the longest run I've ever done. I didn't. I. I so, all you and a carry on. You yeah, one carry on, two and a half weeks, several loads of laundry throughout, and uh, lost so many socks. Mm-hmm. Just lo- kept losing them one at a time. But thankfully, yeah. you kind of mm-hmm. came like uh, a jet getting refueled in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot more than a carry on. Uh, yeah, and you re <laughs> you restocked me a bit. So mm-hmm. yeah. I was out with um, let's see, I flew out on a Wednesday, I think, or a Thursday. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Or Thursday. Le- yeah. Well, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna be all over the or uh, the place where in the order of these stories. Okay. Well, we got back from Joshua Tree on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and I think you left Thursday. I think that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We highly recommend. This, uh, if you haven't done it before, when you travel a bunch, especially with your kids, just have in meal in mind a meal that you want to do right when you get home. Because you don't want to cook, but whatever your local favorite thing is, just save some money from the trip. This is a travel hack. Save some money from the trip to just give yourself one just local delight when you get home. The thing that you missed about the home, which of course mm-hmm. in San Diego was... Mexican food. food. So yeah. we went to Chewy's here in San Diego, mm-hmm. and it was it was the best food I've ever had. Now, was that because yeah. we came off of a camp week? Probably yes. in yes. part. Mm-hmm. Well, and we we got all the pets, and our son picked up the food, so mm-hmm. that was like super fun because we were getting two things done at yeah. once. Yeah, we got home, yeah. and it was mm-hmm. uh, we we had to go get those cats. We have two cats and a bunny, and we mm-hmm. had to go pick those cats up. Mm-hmm. They closed at five. We got there at four forty five. It was tight. Yeah. It was tight. But mm-hmm. we beat the line of that last rush. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the cats are very happy to see us. And you did your favorite moment when we get home is when we let the cats out, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Well they they just act so erratic when we get them home. Mm-hmm. They they meow like so much more and then they'll like kinda at first they're mad so they distance themselves. Yes, from yes. Us. But then they are so needy uh-huh. that they just like can't even, you know, they're yeah. just like all over us. And we have indoor outdoor cats. So they're <laughs> like, it's constant in and out, in and out, in and yeah, out. Yeah. So, out. and then they meow a lot more. So, what the first couple hours they get home, you're just letting them in the front door, out the back door, in the front door, out the back door. There'll be times um, where our they're cats. They're just circling the house. There'll be cats where <laughs> our youngest cat, Donut Hole, uh, he's in the house for less than 30 seconds. He'll just come in the front door. I'm like, just hop the fence. I know you can do this. <laughs> you're a, you're a prime athlete right now. I mean, maybe you're a little bit at the end of your prime, a la LeBron, but you still, you can still dunk, and I know you can get over that fence. Your old man Fritter, he, I don't think he can anymore. He it, still gets in the loft bed. He but, still gets in the loft bed, and it's a, it's hard listen, to watch. We've all had injuries in the loft bed. And, Everyone. And, and the loft bed is leaving soon. I actually think only yeah. you have had been injured by the loft bed. I think everybody <laughs> else. Um, yeah, the loft yeah, bed. Yeah, tell did, me about that. You've got it. You've the got loft in bed your mind. Did of, injure me. Yeah, and you, and you've Fritter can barely get up there, but he still does. It's a tough watch. He's like bridging. Oh. It is a tough. <laughs> It's, it's a me. it's a tough <laughs> no. It is a tough watch to watch an old cat still try and get in on a top bunk. I don't know why mm-hmm. he's doing it. He likes it up there. He does. Um, yeah, so he's just trying to stay young. He, <laughs> he's just trying to be like, oh, just I gotta feel alive. Um. Well, I think it's like a cat hotel where the top is the best. Yeah. You know, like the cat trees. I guess. You know, yeah. so you get loft beds. Yeah. Um. So you were on ten days, and our ten year old was sleeping in our bed. And mm-hmm. and I cannot easily move her like an hour or two into her sleep. The, and the tough thing with our youngest kid is she still acts like a youngest kid, but she has outgrown the size of a youngest kid. Yeah, she's tough to move she's in the middle of the night. Mostly adult now, and so I had been trying to move her, and I kept trying to coax her back in her bed mm-hmm. because 
she does this like violent hand. Yeah. Um, Claire's got, yeah. It's a face slap. <laughs> it's a straight arm slap. Yeah. Um, to the face. And it's very difficult. Uh, so it, yeah. she's not fun to sleep with. And so I, I'm trying to, I've decided we're, we're getting rid of our last loft bed. Yeah. And even if we just have to like jam a desk in that room, like yeah. a space. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about getting rid of her dresser altogether. Whoa. Because all of our kids now, we just have these like canvas boxes under their uh-huh. bed and they don't really have to fold their clothes. They just put them in the boxes mm-hmm. and they just slide them in and out. So yeah. it's even better than drawers mm-hmm. because like you can, every, all the space under your bed is full of clothes. Mm-hmm. So it's better than a dresser. Very efficient. See, you said you're half efficient. This is very efficient. Well, I'm just, at first I was going to get one, her one of those beds that had a dresser under it. Mm-hmm. But these canvas boxes have worked so well for our yeah. teens that I'm convinced. That Shout out Ikea. This is what we're going to do for Claire. So so now I'm like, yeah, you, you got your own big bed on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I need her to get out of our bed. So you you're here to well, couple thoughts on that. One, you're here to tell me we got a trip to IKEA coming up. Let's go. Come on, poor person date night. IKEA, the original escape room. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's uh, how do you get out? I don't know. Just sniff for meatballs. <laughs> There'll be some clues. There'll be some clues. (laughs) It used to be such a good poor person date night that they used to have a kid's area, but I think the kid's area got closed down during COVID. Uh, Small land? (laughs) Small land is what they call it. Yeah. (laughs) It got closed, right? I think it's back. I think it's backed in a modified fashion. Okay. (laughs) I think you have to be like under like four feet. Like you, you know, you you can't be that big anymore to get in there. I can't go in? You can't. (laughs) Got the ball pit. Ball pits are one of those things that went away and were like, that's probably best. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even, even as a kid, you're like. It, Everyone's just like licking. <laughs> yeah. Ball pits are fun for the first jump. And you're like, ah, oh, gosh. Well, they're now not I'm, deep. Now they're it's not like, deep. Now it's like getting out of a, like a bean bag. Like, oh, gosh. Yeah. This is not as much fun as I thought it, it would be. It's hard to get out of a foam pit. Yeah. Um, Almost as hard to get out of a uh, deep end of a pool on a ladder mm. um, in front of like 100 people. In your mom bathing suit that you felt really good about? <laughs> I thought you looked great. I'm a big fan. I like your bathing Well, I usually, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Nordstrom Rack person. I, I like to dig yeah. for like higher end stuff at mm-hmm. a cheap discount. A deep discount, but I just I did an Amazon swimsuit yeah. this year and it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. You know where you, know, you go ahead. If you you they really only last one season because the stuff all stretches out. So you just like I only got to wear this like five more times and mm-hmm. then it's gonna break. Well, <laughs> I have good news for you. You know what's near Nordstrom Rack, IKEA. It's true. We got a big mm-hmm. hot middle aged date coming up. Nordstrom Rack and an IKEA. Come on. <laughs> Ikea rack the same day? I, oh gosh. I don't think I have that kind of energy. No. <laughs> no, I mean, it depends on how lost you get in the Ikea, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It really, you're like, <laughs> by the end of it, you feel like an item from the as is as section. Is section. <laughs> <laughs> you're chipped. Uh, you're I got out of line. <laughs> I Ikea starts great. You start with so much life. Those and, interiors are and energy. just exquisite. Yeah, I mean, it's they. IKEA has the same. Um, IKEA has the same the showrooms. Yeah, what does they say? Mm-hmm. The IKEA has the same. Um, IKEA has the same interior plan and structure as casinos. <laughs> yes. That they're Bright like you and don't. Shiny. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. okay. You don't. No, no clocks. No clocks. No windows. No windows. No windows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just in, and they want you in. Just. Mm-hmm. Keep buying. Just yeah, cha-ching, and you'll never be able to find the bathroom cha-ching. or the exit. Yeah, yeah, you're stuck. So the Hotel California. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Check out anytime you like. You never leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, you just have this giant cart full of things that you're like, "What am I supposed to do with this? How do I, how do I get I, this in my? I can't get these in my car. How do I get or this in my, my Camry? <laughs> oh no, this was an immediate mistake.
I hate this so much. <laughs> so I, I totally. It is funny though that you, you, um, you had. I think, I think you had an exact moment that Claire slapped you in the face, and you're like, "We got to get rid of the loft bed." <laughs> yeah, I this was, was like a three in the morning. I was thing. telling my friends it was something like, um, because our teens were fairly busy. The 10 days you were gone. Mm-hmm. But Claire was not busy. She had like a 30 minute yeah. martial arts right. class at right. like 6 p.m. So I was like really trying to like prep for the trip, do a bunch of house stuff, get some work done, entertain mm-hmm. her. And there was something, you know, it's usually like day five when you're solo parenting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, what could I change? Yeah. How could I just <laughs> change this house? Yeah. Um, well, and anyway. also like, in all parents know this, but like, it would sharing a sharing a bed with your small child is worse than like five small raccoons. Yes. There, yes. it's mm-hmm. the twisting. It's the up and the down. It doesn't even make sense what they're doing. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, it's uh, you're like this was easier when you were in my womb. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> No, I mean, they just like starfish and they like put their knees up yeah. and then the hand slap. Yeah. Yeah. It's... If there is a, if there is like a way that, I mean, that, that small children have a unique ability to find like pressure points on you in the <laughs> middle of the night. They don't like hit your butt cheek, which you wouldn't even feel. It's like a heel to the rib cage. And you're mm-hmm. like, how did you even get at that level? Yeah. How did you, where did you shape wise, <laughs> how did your foot get to my hip? That doesn't, you know. It's terrible. Yeah. It's you're really like, bad. You wake it's up in so the middle bad. of the night, you're like, did mm-hmm. I just take a knee to the head? Yeah. You got mm-hmm. full upside down mm-hmm. and on your belly, a full knee to the head is incredible. It's the worst. It's <laughs> WrestleMania. Yeah. I mean, it is WrestleMania. Top ropes, you drop kick to the except, face. Yeah, except mm-hmm. you're really getting hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than WrestleMania. These are real hits. You wake up one night and some your four year old's got you in an ankle lock somehow. You're like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> How did you unconsciously <laughs> get me in a submission move? <laughs> Strangles you with the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> like just just put me out of my misery just just stab me just kill me just this is your this it's uh it's it's like just brutal acupuncture all night long <laughs> oh 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 anyways what we're saying is we're getting a loft bed <laughs> <laughs> uh anyways so it was quite an adventure though to get you there because we so mm-hmm. I was gone for a lot of this. That's why I didn't know about yeah. loft bed. I, I mm-hmm. came back and you were talking loft I bed had a, and a big intervention with yeah. myself. <laughs> well, what happened was so I was gone for two and a half weeks. You joined me a little bit into it, but I left on a Thursday, mm-hmm. and then you I met up with you two Mondays after that. Yeah, so it was so ten days. Our big travel day was Sunday. Yours was big Sunday, so I uh-huh. I travel out. Um, yeah. when you, when you travel with old Nady B's, mm-hmm. uh, Nate Borgetri, uh, you go out the day before. So I go out on, uh, late Thursday shows on Friday. We do Friday, Saturday, Sunday shows at the Fox theater, which I had done with Tay before. So I've mm-hmm. done this theater before. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Nate has like, these were his SNL reschedules. Yeah. So they had been sold out forever. Mm-hmm. And they were small venues for Nate yeah. because he's like adding arenas. I mean, we went to Austin. He did three arenas. So he, he, adding arena show. He even said at one point we were like we were golfing and he was like the whole point of adding us uh, moving to arenas was to not have to add shows. Insane. But I, you know, mm-hmm. he's just just on. I mean, he's literally the number one touring comedian in the world. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. I mean. We did that when we were in Austin. We did an arena on a Monday, and we're like, "Huh? You got fifteen thousand people to show up somewhere on a Monday? I don't know that in, Jesus could do that at the end of June." Yeah, yeah, yeah it's insane. I like, I, you know, Jesus comes to town on a Monday. People are like, "Ah, he'll probably come back next year." I don't know. Monday's <laughs> a tough day. Monday's a tough day. Just getting into my work week. I'm just ugh, the kids got kung fu. You know, mm-hmm. but old Nady B's comes to town. <laughs> uh, if, if there's an excuse, we've heard it. 
<laughs> People will miss my shows for a lot of reasons. I've uh, like, I just can't like do a Sunday show. Yeah. I do love when people tell, ah, I like you, but not enough to be tired. Yeah. Which I get. Yeah. I get. So I go go out with Nady B and uh, Mm -hmm. for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The next one I'm going to kick up with him is on Wednesday and you have to fly home. You have to come back out on Tuesday in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. We live in California, so I'm not going to fly home to be home for eight hours on Monday. So I stay at Nate. Mm -hmm. Um stay at Nate's actually in Nashville on Monday, Tuesday, we fly out to Indy. We do Indy Springfield. We do two nights in Indy, Indy Springfield, Omaha and find it and Rosemont, Chicago. And, uh, which was funny because, so we did the arena there, the all state arena. And he had done a COVID show in that parking lot of like, Oh wow. Which was interesting. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, we've, He's like, I'm so Came glad. Inside. That's what he says. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful to be indoors. This is yeah. fantastic that uh, that we get to go into the actual building this time. That's crazy. I mean, those Nate shows are just otherworldly. Mm-hmm. They're just, you just, it's crazy. Like, you, Are they all in the round? Yeah, for the, for the most, most part. part. There was like, yeah. so any of the new ones are. So the indie ones were kind of. Uh, yeah. The indie yeah. ones were not, mm-hmm. and someone explained it to me is because I think SNL just sent him in such a different atmosphere as far as like the tickets went yeah. even bigger, mm-hmm. yeah. And that had been sold before SNL, so it was before they were doing uh-huh. the round, and they couldn't mm-hmm. shift it because they're like these people bought row two. Yeah, and there's not, you know what I mean. The, the well, ticket, there's no ticket. Arenas switch. have like a way. To, it's like casinos. They have a way to see different amounts of people exactly yeah um yeah Mm -hmm. so i'd imagine they can't adjust so yeah it was uh they're wild and the ones in the 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 ones in indy were fantastic the ones in the round are great the round is really it's it you wouldn't think it but it is the way to do those shows it's just a way to get them all closer to Mm -hmm. you everyone Mm -hmm. is closer to you in that scenario and you're not just out yelling that these are problems that i don't have to worry about i'm just like could we hit the the second tier on the late show. If we could get past <laughs> past the front tier on my yeah. club shows mm-hmm. on the late show would mm-hmm. be fantastic. Um, but it was great because it was the end of the tour, the Be Funny tour. Mm-hmm. And so there was like a big end of tour party. Yeah. Like they did like mm-hmm. a, they like, it was like the office. They did like a casino night. <laughs> so it was fun. We, like in the arena, it was, it was super fun. But it wasn't just like you went to a casino, like you, no, the casino, they a... like, yeah, the c- casino night. Like, mm-hmm. again, like that episode of The Office where they like dealers and stuff and they mm-hmm. just set up tables. It was fun. It's actually a very fun way to do a big party like that because people are like gambling, but not really. So it's like entertaining. Yeah, everybody gets a set amount of chips and then yeah. the chip leaders at the end of the night uh, win. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, Nate had the most chips. He didn't win, <laughs> of course, because he's not a monster. He's not like, here's the, pri-, you know, I, I get my own grand prize. I get yeah. my own iPad or whatever yeah. the prize was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he went on like some super hot run at the roulette table, like which was crazy. <laughs> like he was mm-hmm. he's winning on the number, not the color. So when you do roulette, uh-huh. you can like bet the color or the, you can win even bigger, bigger, better odds on the number. And he hit like the number, the specific number multiple times. So well. it is funny because I'm not like well versed in casinos, but like uh, uh, Greg Warren was there and uh greg is and it was funny he like Mm -hmm. knew the rules of all the games and so we were Mm -hmm. like he's like come on we're going to the roulette table we're gonna go play craps and you're like okay sure did you learn some stuff i did Mm -hmm. and that is kind of helpful because uh casinos not that you need to be well versed in a casino but you know there's cheap what's the best way to learn is on a casino night when there's when someone can teach you there's no money to exactly yeah. yeah So it is like uh, touring with Nate is like it's like a comedy camp like for mm-hmm. comics because mm-hmm. it's a lot of sports, just a lot of food, there's mm-hmm. a lot of downtime. But like there's also it's like, like also a constant hang, constant hang. Uh-huh. Like we just there's movies and there's it, there's, you know, we're you watch watching debate, comedy. We're you, watch, uh, yeah. you just, you did it all. Uh, we, yeah. NFL or we watched uh, uh, we NHL? watched a, there was a there was a Copa game. We watched I convinced everyone to watch a little soccer, which not everybody was excited about, but mm-hmm. they entertained me. We all sat down and watched the uh, 
the fever uh, fever game we all watched uh there was a fight uh ufc fight there was uh there's a lot of sports on and uh there was another uh, we played basketball we played ping pong uh aaron Did weber you play pickleball uh no, no no pickleball happened mm -hmm. which is probably for the best for everybody yeah. else because i would have I would have, it would have been tough. It would have been tough for them. <laughs> There's no easy way to say this, but. Did you watch a comedy special? We did watch a comedy special. I knew it. As, uh, yeah, it was, uh, of course. We always do. <laughs> so, the, uh, we, the basketball was fun. Uh, Aaron Weber gave me a high compliment, and then he uh, described me as annoyingly athletic, which is That's fine. Nice. I've been told, mm -hmm. um, Deceptively? Uh, deceptively athletic and mm -hmm. annoyingly athletic. These are backhanded compliments, which are people going, I would have never thought you to be an athlete. People do the same in comedy. Mm -hmm. Really? You? <laughs> like I'm just supposed to be on all the time, just dancing for you. What do you need? Like I'm supposed to be a live comedy movie for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll yeah. appreciate this. I mm -hmm. saw someone tweet the other day, or it was a joke. I wish I remember the comedian. She goes, I used to think that my boyfriend was funny and then I watched the movie Anchorman, and I realized he had just memorized this movie. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty funny because we have people in our life that we've talked uh, about before that yeah. like, so this is just what you do. You I, just yeah. You just I am say the Anchorman movie. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Uh, there was a lot of very funny moments at uh, on the the run with Nady B. And one of them was we are at a college in Springfield. Do you mind looking up the college? Springfield College. It was like Southern Missouri, I think. Mm -hmm. um, now, why? That's where the arena was. That was where the arena was. Um, yeah. Missouri State. I think that's it. So we're having Missouri State, and it's official. Um, uh, it's college visit day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so Tour. It's, mm -hmm. So it's kind of bumping and. And the and uh, the students are there, prospective students. Their parents are all there. It's very fun We're talking to Greg about the college. Greg was an all American wrestler, uh, and I was like, and he wrestled at Mizzou. And I was like, did you ever wrestle here? I was like, yeah. He's like, how did you do? He's like, we don't lose to schools like this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that was fun. It's uh, amazing. But people are prospective students, and so we were. Uh, Scoot scooting. We were on scooters. There's like mm -hmm. six dudes on scooters. It's like uh, the comics and a couple of the other crew are all just out there scootering. And there's like a big bear in the middle of the campus. You might have seen the picture that we took. And so we yeah. all taken our picture in front of us. And finally, we're on the campus. Finally, mm -hmm. an employee comes out and they're like, hey, I just have to ask, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Was it the weekend or? It was the campus visit day on Saturday. Okay. And they're like, yeah. are you guys like alums? Because you're not wearing any gear. Why are you here? Are you here with the tour or something? Or what's going what's on? What's your deal? What's your deal? And, <laughs> Eight grown men. and then so someone was like, uh, no, we, we are here with the tour. And she's like, what are you guys, like comedians or something? I've never, I'm like, uh, and she started asking questions. She goes like, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, I don't know any, like, she's like, I'm going to the show, I'm so excited. Nate's with us, by the way. And she's like, oh, we're so excited about the show. Do you guys, like, know Nate or anything, you know? And she's like, I don't, sorry, I don't recognize any of you. She goes, but I do know what Nate looks like. <laughs> and we're, and now, oh my gosh. Nate is there in oh sunglasses gosh. and a hat. Yeah. And then as she says, says that, I think she sees us kind of smirk a little and she realized, and then she kind of like looks and she stares at Nate. This is not an exaggeration for five to 10 seconds <laughs> and goes, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, oh my. And then, and then all the staff comes out and some people are taking pictures. Cause it was just so funny though. Cause she's like, I know what Nate, and you're like, oh. <laughs> he's right here. <laughs> and then Nate, who is as super, I mean, he's so gracious and so kind and takes mm -hmm. a picture and chats with them for a good long time. That's nice. But it was very fun. Um, this reminds me of when I was at the Mission Valley Mall and they have a circus tent sometimes mm -hmm. coming through. And then I was leaving the parking lot and I saw this like ripped woman mm -hmm. riding a bike yeah. next to the trailer. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And there was a little kid on a bike behind uh -huh. her. And I was like, oh my gosh. That's them. They're in the show. That's the circus people. <laughs> and that's, They're just camping out at the mall. Yeah, and yeah. that's what mm -hmm. Melissa thinks of Nate.
as a random <laughs> carnival <laughs> worker <laughs> on a bike <laughs> in a mall parking lot. It's just so exciting. It is exciting. And you see them off stage. Yeah. I was yeah. really hoping you were going to stop and ask them and they just, they weren't part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh man, we're just trying just to- on a bike ride. Just trying to kill some time on a Tuesday. <laughs> Here's my kid. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Totally yeah. normal. You think, you think we're in the circus? Totally normal for <laughs> some jacked lady at her to be hanging out with her kid on a unicycle. <laughs> She's juggling. <laughs> listen, they gotta warm up. <laughs> uh, listen, the economy is so bad that I might encourage our Gen Z kids to consider the circus. <laughs> circus arts. Circus arts. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. You might have to just like literally learn how to juggle. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, you gotta I don't know I don't know these uh there's no there's no clear route for you anymore. Mm-mm. Even we we were kind of one of the last generations that like remember when we were kids they're like get into computers. Computers are yes. computers aren't going computers away. Computers are the future. Yeah. Just learn anything about computers. Maybe our yeah. kids could do social media for the circus. Now we're talking. Mm-hmm. Who's yeah. gonna run the TikTok for the circus? Our kids. Gloria Nickerson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something to consider. She's on it enough, uh, you know. As you said, that Joel just sent me that he needs twenty one dollars into his account based on his Depop <laughs> sales. Our son sells vintage clothes online. <laughs> uh, anyway, so thank you, Nate, for having me out. It was fantastic. So much fun. And then so fun. we shifted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, oh man, did we shift! So <laughs> Sunday morning, uh, I wake up in Chicago, Illinois. Mm-hmm. I have a show to do that night. And you wake up in La Mesa, California. Yes. And you have mm-hmm. to get three children and yourself from San Diego to Atlanta mm-hmm. and get to the hotel. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we booked you a slightly later flight. I booked your car. So the car yeah, was coming. You, you booked a bunch of stuff for us. And we, it, we it was have great. we call Mel uh, Country Mouse. Uh-huh. And that, yeah. and you're not a country mouse compared to a true country mouse, but compared to me, you certainly are. I don't travel and, multiple cities in a weekend, which is what you do. And usually you have the benefit of to, traveling with me, which is, it's like the Disney tag along thing. What do they call that? Someone who's like, I forget, there's like a tag along thing. So someone plans the whole trip and then the ever, everyone else is just like, where do I go? I'll just follow you. And that's me at the airport. Just yeah. follow me. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to do that. And uh, it works out great. All the boarding passes are on my phone. Yeah. All the perks. I'll check in the mm-hmm. bags. I'll tell us where to go. Most likely, I've been to this airport anyways. I have a pretty good... You know what restaurants and which terminals, and it's fantastic. It's yeah. so easy to travel with yeah. you. I know the where... Follower, I think, is the passenger princess. Passenger princess. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. You are the passenger and, princess. And those Disney people know where the Dole Whips are, where the good right. bathrooms. Right. Like, just everything. And mm-hmm. it's fantastic. Um, but I got to do that all that solo. And I think I just, I had a really rough start because I was at a swim lesson with our littlest and then I start getting texts from the teens. This is on that, Saturday. Yeah. The that, day before you leave. That they're going, they've got plans, but don't worry, Joel's going to drive me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh no. So it's like 1130 and they're texting me and then they, I'm picking that middle child up at like 10 PM that Saturday night yeah, because she has gone the whole day with these plans and these rides that she thinks she has developed. But, you know, like, so my son hung out with three different friend groups on Saturday yeah, and gave my daughter a ride one way to Mission Bay with friends. So it was just like nonstop and they hadn't packed. They hadn't done their chores. I'm playing basketball (laughs) (laughs) and I'm trying to pack and I got the 10 year old. And so it's like almost midnight and we're all up right trying to finish this stuff and so it was a fine travel day it was just the last detail was i've been to the atlanta airport i've done the underground train to the terminal the terminal or train, the, yeah. um baggage claim but i could not find the sky train to our hotel mm-hmm. and i finally settled because if you know me i'm like it's better to eat before you get too upset yes then to it's like better for the whole group prioritize honestly. like a high quality yeah. meal and our and so i did i was like food court where this is our dinner and it was like kfc burger king 
Random Chinese Well, because you, you ate on the wrong side of baggage claim or on the wrong side of security, too. Well, All the good stuff is on the term on the yeah. gate side. And in my head, I was like, no, we have like four checked bags. We got it. We got it. We got to go get our go bags. Go get our bags. And so I just had like, I was like, I, I need to prioritize vegetables. I had the worst Chinese food in mm-hmm. the Atlanta airport. It's stunning that it wasn't good. They were like literally closing, so they were out of everything. Yeah. And, um, but everybody ate, and our flight was delayed two hours in San Diego. We were on the tarmac for two hours. But besides that, it was like an 11 hour day. You were delayed two hours? Yeah. Remember, it just wouldn't take off. The oh, plane man. would not. I forgot about that. Leave the ground. Summer travel's brutal. Um, I was talking to Tomlinson about that yesterday. It's so bad. Summer yeah. travel's so bad. So we did, we just like had the perfect hotel. To like shower and sleep in. Mm-hmm. And I was so relieved when we got to the yeah, hotel. It's a good feeling. And um but you like did, our I daughter kind of wanted to swim, the 10 year old, but thank God they didn't have a pool. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, yeah. oh no, we I can't. Actually, I actually remember thinking that it when I booked that have for you a guys. Pool. Yeah. Um, and then we did the classic thing where her and I caught the breakfast, mm-hmm. let the teens sleep. Yep. And then we brought them food. I had like, milk jugs in my pockets milk you know jugs like the little milks oh yeah you milk know cartons. The cartons sorry the cartons <laughs> i, I like I, milk hands, jugs sorry now. forgive me um Smuggling milk jugs. Yeah, yeah yeah so we all rested and showered like, and the ate. ones you knock over at a carnival milk jugs sorry <laughs> you know um <laughs> And then you showed up with the rental car. So we, uh, the mm-hmm. plan was, so I got added. So originally I was just on the St. Louis and then I got added to the next run. But we needed to be in Alabama by Monday mm-hmm. to go to this camp that we'll tell you guys about here in a second. But we, uh, I'm like, well, I can meet you there on Monday. So I land from Chicago to Atlanta, easy flight, get the rental car. Actually, my original thought was like, oh, you guys will just get in. And then we'll, and I was like, no, no, I need to get in and get everybody moving and help. And I ate some of the breakfast, too. Uh, and everyone at the hotel front desk was like, where'd this extra guy come from? Because <laughs> I walk in with a bag and they're like, you checking in? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. This is a totally normal time to show up with a bag and not check in and go to a hotel. Don't ask questions. You don't want answers to Spring Hill Suites, Atlanta Gateway. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we get settled and we... Off to camp we go. Um, so, a remarkable job, by the way. Oh, thank you. I've never, was, I've never Saturday flown was with harder, all three kids. The Saturday was harder than the Sunday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is something. We've yeah. flown together a lot mm-hmm. as a family. I have flown with two kids. Like, yeah, I took the, the girls. girls. Yeah. I've never flown with, and I've flown with one kid. You're the first. You did the, you did solo, so, three kids, across the country. We did get lucky because... Uh, you get all the check bag privileges, mm-hmm. but then they were so overbooked that they let us check our bags at the gate. Nice. Yeah, which is nice. Because nice, then we didn't have to pay. That's great. Yeah. Well done. Mm-hmm. Plus, you saved that $30 at uh, Roadrunner yesterday. <laughs> we have a long distance runner. And, uh, uh, and a volleyball player. And, and running we, shoes are so expensive. We bought all their gear yesterday. And I mean, we spent, because I got running shoes too. We spent like four hundred dollars at this renting store, and they're like, "You save thirty dollars." <laughs> it doesn't feel good. You're like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, and then I was at Dick's dropping a couple hundred on volleyball stuff. Yeah, and uh, they're like, "Do you want to use your seven dollars of rewards?" Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. They're like, "Do you want to use points. triple points? Do you want to use triple points?" I'm like, "Obviously, look how expensive this is." <laughs> I usually just come here and buy like one pair of. Clearance shorts for myself, <laughs> and my daughter's like, "I need the LeBrons to see if I make the freshman team for volleyball." You're like, "Seems like a bit of a high ask. Maybe let's see if you make the team first. It so is it, so sad that you have to buy the gear before in tryouts. advance. Coach, tell me if they're going to make the team before I buy the gear. Is it worth it? Can you rent gear like you do at a ski lift or a ski snow? You're like, just let me, let me borrow this gear. They, they should have a program for. The kids who get cut from tryouts, and and they can return their shoes and buyback. Like yeah, their, yeah, yeah. They're back. Kind of like the book buyback in back in the uh, back when we went to college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get like ten bucks. Ten bucks yeah. at least. Will you give me store credit? Can I get half store credit? We had a pair of soccer cleats that never 
you know, that made it one. This prop. This actually <laughs> explains a lot of like sometimes you'll be at a played against sports. Yeah. And you're like, these are brand new. Mm-hmm. We used remember we used to make this joke. We'd be like in a Goodwill or Value Village because we're a huge thrift store people. You see like a brand new pair of shoes and you'd be like, this is a kid that didn't play. <laughs> like <laughs> like yeah. he grew out of these. Yeah. Yeah. And he like made the team and he got the shoes and he did not get a lot of playing time. But you should, there's got to be I guess some... that's why they use sport, sporting goods is well, because in the market. Also tryouts are hard and they are like, I dropped Glory off today and a girl gets out of the car and I go, that's your competition. And she goes, she's not even wearing volleyball gear. And I was like, oh no, you are right. The coach is going to think that. Like this isn't a oh, real yeah. player because they don't have the gear. Now. If she's talented, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. She but. might be an amazing softball player, which is like a crossover for volleyball. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all shoulder. Mm. Yeah. You know. I, I would know. <laughs> I, it's people, kind of my wheelhouse. People think you're in the circus. <laughs> Coming in with these shoulders. <laughs> I like them. You better spot me in a parking yeah. lot. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is that one in the circus? Uh, so we go to Hope Heels. We have one plan stop, Bucky's, because I know that there's a Bucky's between Atlanta and. Dropped a lot of money there. Every time. <laughs> every time. It's built into our budget. We're not going to spend, we're going to spend $0 at camp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We would spend some, but the camp store is never open. <laughs> so we go to, a, we, uh, we volunteer at a uh, camp every year uh, called Hope Heals. Um, mm-hmm. Some of you guys may or may not know that, but Jane Catherine Wolf, uh, it's their organization. And uh, it's a family, it's a camp for families that have someone in the family with a disability. And so it's a super accommodating, super inclusive camp. Mm-hmm. And we got hooked up with them. We put it together. I think it was. Tw- I think this was my fifth year of involvement, mm-hmm. um, because they hired me to do one, and I ended up just doing a virtual one because it was 2020. And they didn't do it, and then so 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I did a virtual one, and then I've been there four times, and then our family's been there three times. Yeah. And I d- I didn't know anything about it when I first showed up. I did the vi- virtual gig I was doing during COVID. I would just pre-record a thing I'd do in my house, and they would. Play it. Yeah, yeah, play it. Yeah. And then this one, and then I went in and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is what this is. How do we get more involved as a family? And I told this story. It was an exact moment. So I go in the gig having no idea. I, I even said this it, during my set this year. I would have said no to this gig it, had it not been 2021. We were saying yes to a lot of gigs. Mm-hmm. And it's not because I didn't care about the organization. It's because it's hard to get to. Mm-hmm. Camp McDowell is in Nauvoo, Alabama. That's outside of Jasper, Alabama, which is already outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Mm-hmm. We're already two outsides yes. of a place. Mm-hmm. That's all, Birmingham is already hard to and expensive to get to, it by is. the way. Yeah. So, but So I get there, and I'm just saying a lot of yeses at this point in my career because my job had been illegal for a while. And uh, so we get there, and I had to take a red eye. And I get up at like, like I have one of those like 1 p.m., 2, 3. I think I'm on at like 4 or something like that. I get up. I go to take a shower. There's a spider the size of my hand in the shower. <laughs> I, I skip. It's your least favorite thing. I'm so scared of spiders. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, well, I can't shower here. I will. I have to burn the camp down. And uh, mm-hmm. But I go and do the gig. And the gig is going great. And... But there's a very specific moment where this is a 2020. I'm going to retell the joke and retell the story and kind of tell you how we got hooked. Um, this is an old joke about how I was traveling at the time a lot and I had a very unique experience of where I saw a woman on a plane sitting across from me who was wearing a mask, but she was also breastfeeding without a cover. And I thought, what a unique moment in time, right, that I've seen this woman's nipple but not her nose it's a fun joke and it's a true story now there's an individual named david there who has uh limited verbal skills and he's in a wheelchair for whatever whatever reason that joke tickled him and he has a beautiful laugh it's it's pretty high pitch it's gorgeous it's an amazing laugh pretty distinct and it's Mm -hmm. a great laugh and this gig is in a chapel so it hits and it reverberates and it's it's like angelic. 
the way that it's hitting. And mm-hmm. it's like, this is what these, this building was made for noises and voices and laughs and responses like this. And it echoes and it hits me. And then he can't stop laughing. And then he kind of keeps laughing as I kind of get into the next joke. And then I keep laughing again. And it was a very beautiful moment. And I talked to you later. I was like, we, this is it. And I tell them, I was like, we're back. We're, we're doing this every year. I have kids that can help. Uh, I, I have a wife that can teach art. So we're back and we're back. And this was my first year back with David. Yeah. So David was back this year. Mm-hmm. And it happened again. And mm-hmm. it was, uh, I'm not going to tell the joke because it's in the new hour. Uh, but it's a, I'm a clean comedian. But it is a joke that involves the female anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> and it got David again. <laughs> and it happened and it was just it's just such a, a beautiful moment because m- like selfishly as a performer, um, it is it, comedy clubs are not super accommodating for a lot of individuals. And I'm like, this can I, I this is nice for me that I can do an inclusive show. Yeah. Your theaters mm-hmm. are hard mm-hmm. to get to. Th- theaters are old. I don't play theater. Theaters are old. They're oftentimes very accommodating. It's a pain to get yeah, to, but this whole the camp, they're there. And ah, it's just it's the best. And everything, ab- I, yeah. I, I, everything about this camp is terrible, which is why it's so great. Like every, it's hard to get to. It's so hot. The mm-hmm. food is the worst food I've ever had, even by camp food standard. Mm-hmm. And it's, but it's beautiful. And we go every year, and we'll go again next year. Just it's. Uh, Jay and Catherine doing an unbelievable job. The other contributors are so good. It's just, uh, it's magical. It really is yeah, a really special place. I think, um, it, I don't know if this makes sense, but if I could summarize it, but like there's a talent show for the campers. Talent show's a real tear fest. Um, they have the uh, kind of like uh, special performance, which you did. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a spa day for the adult campers and mm-hmm. the kind of the moms. The men's um, lay low, where unfortunately I have to sit through some improv. <laughs> <laughs> they do an adult dinner. It's not my scene. It's not my scene. <laughs> the uh, stories are ta- like in a good way. Like yeah. poof, there's just like four. Oh, I, I didn't go- David. So yeah. David, I, I connected with, there was a family that we really connected with. Like we crossed a lot of... Um, uh paths. paths with them yeah so uh david was the dad uh cash was the youngest son or maybe nash nash sorry cash yeah. and ford for okay so cash he is nash nash i'm sorry Na- okay. i'm it's nash, nash ford nash Melissa, nash david. nash was um a camper that gloria was kind of like a co-cc with they the what does cc stand for I'm not even sure. Um, Just kind of helped out with a camp. Um, I don't know what that analogy and, uh, uh, yeah. is. <laughs> and helped yeah. out with a camp and really connected. Then then David, who I'd never met, came to me one day. is like, thank you so much. Your daughter's being so helpful. And I'm like, my daughter? We're talking about the same? We're talking about the <laughs> same daughter that I know? So she's really strong. Because she told me she hated me this morning. Uh, <laughs> so she was helping a lot. Which is fantastic. Which yeah. is great. Mm-hmm. And then... The talent show was unbelievable. My, I don't want to say favorite, but a standout act was their older son, Ford, did a ventriloquist, a puppet mm-hmm. that was Russian <laughs> and was very funny and was like, what do you think of uh, the Hope Heels? And he's like, it's good program. It was very funny. <laughs> so he was very funny. And then David shared kind of his family story at one of like the men sharing times. And then they went to the show and then they're married to a Melissa. Mm-hmm. He's married. He's got a Melissa. So just a lot of crossover. And that's what's wonderful about this is you just spend so much time with these families, you know. And uh, and there's a lot of friends that mm-hmm. weave and stuff you get to see once a year. We see the Thomases who we love. And yeah, it's great. And um they do like um, a church service on on like uh, I guess Thursday. it was Thursday night. Yeah, and you just you it's I mean even just hearing the stories like hey man and and you know I know Andy you know this but like church can church is hard for a lot of the like this is some of these families like the one time they can go a year mm-hmm. because it is so and they they're trying to model what this looks like to be so inclusive a, in these environments yeah. and mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. they do like a dinner banquet. You know, where like all are invited. The Luke 14. It's great. Yeah. Banquet. Big fan. It's really nice. Mel teaches art, which is probably my favorite hour of the year, which is watching Mel teach art at Yeah, camp. it's super fun. Mm-hmm. So hot. Yeah. Disgustingly hot. We My class is at 315 outside. <laughs> 
<laughs> people still come. And you were right after mine. That was the thing. Mm-hmm. It was like, man, they really stacked Mel They always and I. stack us on Thursday. Um, yeah, we they do an adult dinner, but, you know, it is maxed out. So we always sit outside uh, at the adult dinner and just, like, sweat through our clothes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The... <laughs> Listen, um, I, I, I have, um, we've never spent the 4th of July in the South. The 4th of July hits a lot harder in the South. (laughs) 4th of July, this is like being in San Francisco for Pride Month. Like, it just means more. There's just like, like, it's, it's just a bigger celebration. And we live in San Diego. We live in a military town. You know, like you too. It's big here, but the South, it's everyone Mm -hmm. and it's it's like it was a huge head to toe head to toe red white and and we forgot Mm -hmm. we we totally forgot to like bring anything also i don't know that i I have a bucky shirt (laughs) (laughs) uh but it was uh it was fun to spend the fourth there it was a very chill fourth Mm -hmm. uh but the south is just we we did you you had a rant that you said like after your third year there were certain things that made more sense in the south um, during yeah. the summer, yeah, I, I mean, I, you'd think I would be growing used to the weather or yeah. adapting, but I'm still like trying to wear jean shorts. Yeah, which it won't do. Huge mistake. Um, so the like athletic dress mm-hmm. slash skirts, they're yes. very popular. Mm-hmm. Minimal, know? minimal M- fabric moisture, wicking. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's very Any, smart. Anything to accommodate sweat. Very smart. Um. Koozies aren't a really big part of our culture out here. No. Our drinks stay cold. They stay cold. They can. You know, it, yeah. the ice stays in the cup. Yeah. Um, we are at this. Adi- you have a window for a cold drink in California. Yeah. 30 minutes, maybe? You, you 20, 30? Yeah. Yeah. Not in the um, south. In the south, like the ice melts immediately. Eight minutes. Yeah. And then you're just, it's just, you're drenched. It's eight minutes yeah. before it's a warm beer. It's 12 minutes before it's a boiling beer. Yeah. Eye makeup. Just don't even try. It's just, just like it's coming down. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's moving. Yeah. Uh huh. It will not stay put. The the Californians stand out at this camp because there's not <laughs> a lot of us that come from Cal, and we stand out. We stand out. We don't know how to dress. <laughs> we're so hot. We're panting by the side of the road. We're, we're yeah. We're in we, rough shape. We're like almost in crisis. Yeah. Uh huh. Just we. <laughs> We're, we're soft. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think this is a good place to end too because, <laughs> Andy, you're a you're a Californian more so than us a whole life. Mm-hmm. I've tried many times to explain, but the Southern mind just cannot comprehend in and out. Oh yeah, they don't. It's hard to explain mm-hmm. that because the Southern the Southern mind, and I love the Southern mind, and I'm a fan of the South, but. I think they just don't get, you know, vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone comes to, particularly people who are not from here, they come to California and they go in and out as trash. And I go, pause, just for a second. Stop comparing it to the best burger you've ever had. This is not a uh, a Red Robin, a, uh, like, wherever wherever you get your good burgers are. Wherever your burger, it's not a fancy burger. This is not a, uh, a Ruth Chris that you're comparing this to fast food, right? And this is yeah. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's so good. It's and it's for and it's affordable. Yeah. It's like Arizona iced tea. It's affordable. It's in really it, affordable. You mm-hmm. we can feed our family of five for thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Yeah. Everyone's mm-hmm. full. And it's yeah. like um, somebody was like uh, talking about like the they didn't understand the menu, and I was like, it's the easiest menu in history. <laughs> What do you, I don't know what you need here. It's singles, doubles. The fries are mid. We all know it. Right. We're, we'll be the first to admit that the fries are mediocre. But when the burger is that good, it just doesn't matter. I don't. I, I, I don't. I, I, don't I, I can't quite communicate it. You know what it is though? Okay. I think I found it. I think I found the comparison. I understand that as an outsider, you look at it and you go like, "This is all a bunch of hype." I don't get it. All people do is talk about how great it is and they wear the merch and they go, I wish this is where I was and da 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 da. In and out is California's Buckies. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Like, mm-hmm. if you're not in it, you don't understand. Like, it's not, it's more than just the food and the experience, it's cultural. 
Yeah. It really is cultural. It's the about atmosphere. And mm-hmm. you know what? I've been to every state. I love them both. Bucky's in and out. Should mm-hmm. be everywhere. I wish those yeah. were the two political parties that were running. Bucky's in and out. Everybody wins. Happy whoever wins. Happy whoever yep. wins. Yeah. We all wins. Mm-hmm. We all wins. Ooh, yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, folks, we just want to give a special shout out to our Essential as Oils patrons. Mm-hmm. That's our $25 a month and up patron. That's our highest, well, second highest. Highest and then there's an even higher, but you guys are great. You guys are great because you get a special shout out here at the end. So special shout out to Avril Griffiths. Adam Bush. Allison Nelson. Andy and Darling Gurton. Bonnie Galliendo. Brandon Schoenberg. Carrie Teague. Christopher and Bridget Finland. Code to grow. Courtney Eibling. Demaria Stevens. Daniel Owens. Dave and Melissa Cox. Dave Hoagland. Dustin Daly. Jason and Francis White. Jessica Hanrahan. Jonathan Riviera. Joshua and Nikki Platt. Jordan Cowan. Juliana Smith. Lori Amos. Matt and Sam Slazdom. Michelle Calson. Nathan and Jennifer Merritt. Nicole Caroz. Rachel Wilson. Rachel Kennedy. Robert and Nellie Capen. Steven Mina. And Tiffany Payne. Thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Thank you.